Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's just tell some stories today. Sometimes I like to spit some games. Sometimes I like to do some research on crime news. I write novels, so I'm always doing research on various gangland type crimes in order to kind of get ideas for my novels. I've written three crime novels about organized crime in California, trying to get published. Let's just talk some stories today. So I was living in Santa Cruz. I've talked a little bit about Santa Cruz. I'll go further with some more Santa Cruz stories and, until I get bored of telling them, I guess. I was living in the barrio. This was the early 90s, 92, 93. I lived there. I, I moved down to Southern California in 96. So I spent about five years down in the flats, the flats barrio. It's all Mexican, Mexican gangland. Sereno's mostly. You got the Mexican mafia there also. I was kind of getting more and more involved with these guys the longer I lived down there. So I was hanging out with the Sereno gang more. I was making friends with some of these older Mexican mafia shot caller guys in between prison stays. These guys are always in and out of prison, so. You might be friends with one of them for a month and they're gone on another 10 year bid. <laughs> you know, I learned right away that in order to get along down there, you're gonna have to just tolerate all the activity. And of course, keep your mouth shut. Now, I've never been a snitch, but you might be tested I was sitting around one night watching TV. I hear a tap on my window. My apartment was ground floor apartment on the corner of the building. And on the, uh, what, what it looked out to, looked out to the street on one side and then the other side, where my bedroom was, it looked out to a basketball court. There'd be guys hanging out in the basketball court, all Sereno street gang members, selling dope, running their turf, and then very often there'd be guys hanging out in front of my building also, which meant their backs were up against my windows. So, I mean, I had to make friends with these guys. <laughs> I started smoking pot with them just because that's a good icebreaker. I'd go out front and smoke a joint with these motherfuckers. There's 10 guys up against my building selling drugs and wearing bandanas, tattoos all over their faces and shit. Once we became friends, I felt like, you know, that's the best security system. You can have ADT if you want. I got 10 guys with guns standing out in front of my window. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> Try to break in, see what happens to you. So one night I'm sitting around. I hear tapping on the window. It's my bedroom window over by the basketball court. And they're tapping, tapping, tapping. I go over to it, open up the window. And it's a line of homies. They had a night crew and a day crew. They would go in shifts. They have to be there. There's shot callers on the block that make sure that the, the head count is right. You have to be out. You have, there's rules. This isn't just a bunch of wannabe gangsters trying to flex on people being tough. This is an army, a corporation. They all have jobs and they have rules. And there's people that, managers and hierarchies. And you know these guys have to be out there, but they can still party. So he passed me a big fucking blunt, long, long rolled blunt. I mean, the thing wasn't very fat. It was just long. <laughs> I mean, it was comical it was so long. Like a pool cue. <laughs> so I'm trying to hit this goddamn thing, sucking on this fucking joint. I pass it back out to him. And this becomes kind of a regular thing every night. I hear that tapping. I go over to the window, somebody passes me a joint, I take a few hits, thanks homie, pass it back. So I'm in bed one night with my girlfriend, and on my bedroom, windows are all around. My bed was right underneath a window that looked out to the basketball court. It's late. I mean, we're asleep, two in the morning, three in the morning, whatever it was. 
I hear that tapping. I'm just like, man, it's too late. I look out. I was just gonna tell him, no, nah, I don't want it. I look out to see who it is. And it's three guys I know. One guy with his back turned, so I see the back of his head up, pressed up against my window. And two guys facing him. And the two guys are stabbing the one guy. Stabbing him over and over and over. Just, just sticking him, sticking him, sticking him, sticking him. Both on both sides, just both just sticking him. I mean, fast. This guy's clawing on the windows as he's being stabbed by these two guys. I know who all three of these guys are. I hang out with them every day. It's none of my business. I ducked down because I didn't want anybody to see me seeing them. You know, I don't want to get caught up in this. I don't want to be a witness to a murder. Even if you are a witness to a murder, you don't want to be witnessed witnessing a murder. You don't want people to see you. I ducked down. My girlfriend was just like, what's that? And I was just like, nothing. Try to go back to sleep. She went right back to sleep. I just sat there in bed, just thinking. There's a guy that's bleeding to death right on the other side, inches from me. That wall isn't that thick. He's literally where my head is, leaning up against my wall, windows right, right above me. There's a man right there, bleeding out, dying. And I know the guys who stabbed him, and I know the guy who's dying. It's just in-house, cleaning house, man. They, they have to. They have to enforce their rules. They have to a clean house. That guy fucked up. I heard about it the other day, the, the day later. He fucked up. Just some inter-gang politics. He broke too many rules and he had to be taught a lesson and there was a progression. You know, first they'll give you a warning, then they'll give you a beating. Then you might suffer a little worse of a beating and then, a, you know, it, you're going to get dealt with. It was just finally his time. I didn't say a word. Next day on the block, I was so itching to ask my friends, so what happened last night? What's all that blood on my, on my wall? You know, what went down here? Nothing. Can't say nothing. Can't say nothing. Little tests like that just got me more and more deeper involved with these guys. They really enjoyed the fact that I wasn't gonna go run into the cops, because I could've. I could've dialed 911 right there, had a phone right next to my bed. Sometimes it's best just to play stupid. It's just an average night hanging out in the hood, man. I mean, I saw in a, just a five-year period living in that neighborhood. Forget about the other neighborhoods. I lived in the jungle in Los Angeles. You know about the jungle? I'll tell you some jungle stories. I lived in Culver City. I'll tell you some Culver City stories about the Culver City murders. But up in the flats, I mean, it was just killing after killing after killing. I seen car bombings. I seen stabbings. I seen beatings. I seen shootings. Seen a guy's head blown off right on my fucking front porch. I mean, it, it just went on and on and on and on. This shit fucked me up. Thanks for watching.